I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading. We are a complete buy, sell, gold and silver company. And right now, quite honestly, the global economy is undergoing a complete economic and social reset. This is specifically what our gold and silver strategies are designed to safeguard you from. And these videos are designed to help you see the truth of what is really happening. So with that, I'm going to go to viewer questions. And I'm going to start with Buckeyed Willie. With an economic depression that will drag on for years and a smaller industrial sector in the future, what will the gold and silver ratio be after the reset? Well, you know, I don't really have any crystal balls, but uh, my guess is, you know, after the reset, it'll be a lot smaller than it is right now. And as we all know, that uh, silver has been going up faster in terms of fiat than, than uh, gold has been, so that gold-silver ratio has become more narrow. But I did a video, um, maybe, I don't know, eight months, a year ago, do you know which one I'm talking about, Megan? Where I showed you what happens with gold and silver through a reset. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, can so, you can you pull the link? All right, and that'll give you a better indication. It'll most likely be smaller, that ratio will be smaller, but I don't know what it's gonna look like on the other side. You need both, I'll say that. You know, I have both, I own gold, I own silver, I own different kinds of each based upon the function that I am trying to accomplish. And that's what I think everybody should do, that's what the strategies are about. And Kenson, Koboyama, do you think the Fed knows that the U.S. debt can never be repaid, so they're just ramping up the printing presses and maxing out the U.S.'s credit card before declaring bankruptcy? Yep, I think they 100% know that, and I think that's exactly what is happening. And they can get, they can get away with it as long as the public still trusts the dollar and trusts them. That's why that confidence key, that confidence is really key. And the OK Corral asks, are the feds really losing control or is this a flat out assault on the world's monetary system? Well, I think it's a combination of the two and that goes back to that confidence piece. We already have seen over time since 2008 where banks lost confidence in each other that was uh, when the LIBOR broke. So that was during the crisis and they refused to lend to them. We saw that again in September. So banks know that they are each other is insolvent and they're not really willing to loan to them. And then we saw central banks lose confidence in central banks in 2015 with the Swiss surprise when you know they're all together at the IMF and Switzerland was was committed to maintaining the peg to the euro and then two days after they re reasserted their commitment bam they broke that peg so that put all central bankers on notice that central bankers are individually will do what is best in their best interest rather than as a whole we have seen coordinated efforts, but that loss of confidence is still there. The only level of confidence that remains, and that has been declining. That's why they look at consumer confidence, small business confidence. You know, they, they look at these confidence numbers, and that's why before this whole thing hit, the COVID hit, they were on uh, globally, central bankers were on a campaign. Oh, tell us what you need from us, blah, blah, blah. Because that confidence was, uh, was declining dramatically. When we go into hyperinflation, all confidence will be lost. That, that's what's going to push us into that, the final blow up. And uh, Dustin Salisbury asks, can you talk about the banks restricting lending and what that means. Well, yeah, if they don't think they're gonna get paid back, then they're not as eager to lend. 
that's really what happened, well, happened last September when they were afraid they weren't going to get paid back. Now, today, with all of the unemployment that there is and all of the bankruptcies that are looming, uh, they're not real e eager to lend, so therefore they are restricting lending, and that's what that means. There's less lending available, even though the central bank funnels money to the banks so they can lend, because that's really what the bank's original job was. But frankly, you know, with interest rates this low for this long, that's why you've seen banks lag because they're not making any money even when they lend. So why should they take that risk? They don't need to. You know, the Fed has their backs. And Samantha Goldman asks, uh, how much more will the Fed need to print to cause the currency to become worthless? Well, Samantha, it's already worthless. Officially, officially, it has less than four cents out of the original purchasing power of the dollar. And, you know, once we went below that four cents, that was the first time I ever saw zero on there. So again, that goes back to the confidence piece. The only reason why it's viable at all is because everybody continues to use it and work for it and use it as their tool of barter. But it is already, even officially, it's worthless. Uh, and Bob Clark asks, how will a reset oh, affect an IRA? That is a really good question. Uh, actually, it is possible, because they've talked about this, the government has talked about this, uh, about doing a one-off, which we saw a number of, of uh, central banks like in Poland and Russia, et cetera, do after the 2008 crisis. They can use that to justify going in and pulling, the, the discussion was 11.6% out of an IRA. And the reason why I say a one-off is because they say that if you think that they will only do it one time, then you will not change your behavior. So I do think that they will use this to justify uh, pulling funds out of private retirement plans. I mean, they talk about it, you know, and they say, oh, it's just not fair that you've been able to save for your retirement over here. And this person hasn't been able to save for the retirement. And let's face it. If, in fact, I'll, I'll read this, I'll read this piece, which I have here and I'll show you more uh, later, but pension funding roundup. This is, this came in yesterday. Uh, well, on August 11th. And it's the latest minimum research on multi-employer and corporate pension plan funding. The multi-employer pension plans experienced dramatic funding swings in the first half of 2020. As of June 30th, the aggregate funded percentage of multi-employer plans dropped to 82% down from 85% at the end of 2019. The estimated investment return for the first half of 2020 was minus 1.3%. Now, let's kind of dissect that a little bit. And when you realize that we have the stock markets and the bond markets either making new highs or near all-time highs, you have to wonder why they got such a bad return. See what I'm saying? And also, you have to wonder, now, if this came out in March, the end of March, okay, that would make some sense. But the fact that it came out as of June 30th, where we've had this massive rally, and it goes back to your question, right? We know globally that we have a, a retirement crisis, and they will use this to... You know, I mean, desperate governments do des desperate things to justify it. But let me talk about the another all-time low discount rate causes corporate pension funds. So we talked about the multi-employer. This is the individual employer pension fund ratio to plummet to 81.1% in July 
despite robust investment return, July's PFI funded status worsened. Uh, let's see. Thanks to a solid investment return. So wow, individual pension plans had a much better, did a much better job than multi-employer. Multi-employers like firefighters, teachers, those kinds of things, multi. Uh, thanks to a solid investment return of 2.85%, partially offset the increase in liabilities. The funded ratio for these plans dropped from 83.5% to 81 point on June 30th to 81.1% at July's end. You know, now let's say for some miracle reason that they don't pull any money from the private retirement plans. It's a possibility. I mean, you know. Well, even if they manipulate the markets up, the value of the dollar is continuing, the purchasing power value of the dollar is continuing to go down and it will go down to zero because that's what's happened 100% of the time. And I don't think this time is different. Look at what's going on. So it is highly probable, just to kind of summarize, it's highly probable that they will take some of the private retirement plans. I mean, you don't hold it, you don't own it anyway. But even if they don't, if it's in fiat, it goes to zero. And let's say you have physical gold and silver inside of those retirement plans. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. So I gotta tell you that if it were me, I would take physical possession, take that distribution, pay your taxes. I believe penalties are waived, double check on that. Uh, but they changed a lot of the laws, especially with COVID and they've waived a lot of the penalties. Pay your taxes now when gold and silver are still severely undervalued and get it in your possession. Because for the umpteenth billion time, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. So uh, that's it. I just did a great interview. I mean, we went all over the place and talked about a lot of things with Dustin Nemos. I, I have to say, I think it was one of my favorite interviews that I've done with him. And I'd really encourage you to go watch it. You know, he is, he is my favorite millennial and he's, he's smart and he gives me hope because it is that generation that is the hope of all generations. So the first generation that was born entirely online and to know that uh, he believes in sound money and also to know that they're demanding, you know, better food. So go and watch that interview. Uh, I will be on with George Gammon on Friday. I don't know when he'll release it, but he typically releases pretty fast. And we always have a lot to talk about. Um, don't forget that we did start not not affiliated with ITM, but on our own for the rest of the strategy. LynetteZang.com. And don't forget, you know, to join the Zang Gang where you'll actually get complete access, direct access to me, better than sending in your questions. Uh, although we want to keep it to the rest of the strategy. Food, water, energy, security, community, and shelter. And this is really mostly about community. Let's come together as a community. Keep in mind that it is 100% time to cover your assets. And you do that with the Wealth Shield, which is made up of physical gold and physical silver. And until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.